So we now move on to the uh, next presenter. Please be, uh, be there yeah, for your question and answer sessions. Maybe you can also watch out the chat box if there's any questions for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we now move on to the last uh, presenter for this uh, first paper presentation session. So we have uh, Alja Herla and Krista Likar from uh, Type Salon Slovenia. They'll be talking about Plisnik. Uh, typeface design on the basis of hand-drawn letters by Jos Plisnik from the archive uh, collection. Uh, so over to Alja. So both of you. Yeah. So thanks for being here. And uh, yeah, you have 15 minutes for your presentation. So thank you. Hello. Uh, we are Alia Hernach and Krista Dikar, and we are co-founders of Type Salon. Type Salon is a design studio based in Ljubljana, Slovenia, that is greatly focusing on typography, develop, developing unique typefaces, and refined typographic solutions. Also, we have organized various typographic workshops and lectures in Slovenia. So last year, we released five typefaces, and one of which is Petsnik. So Pitznik is typeface that was designed on the basis of hand-drawn letters by the great Slovenian architect Jože Pitznik. Very detailed research and uh, access to the archive collection of his lettering opened our awareness and respect of his work even more. Um, so Jože Pitznik, uh, uh, so uh, just a month ago, the selected works of Jorge Plechnik in Ljubljana have been recognized as having outstanding universal value as the UNESCO World Heritage Committee has inscripted his works on the UNESCO list of World Natural and Cultural Heritage. The most famous Slovenian architect is largely known for his architectural works, but less so for his contribution to Slovenian typography. Plesnik did not only design typography for many inscriptions on tombstones, monuments, and facades, but also the graphical image of various printed materials. As we see from the slide, also book, book design. So the typeface, the typeface Plesnik was created, that was created is not digitalization of his sketches, but rather a reflection of the current state of design whose starting post, uh, point is rooted in the principles and forms of Pechnik's letters. Furthermore, the process of defining and develop, developing the typeface was based on detailed research of Pechnik's life, his work and his teaching principles. Pechnik's typographic style. So Plesnik started his career with studies in Vienna, where he studied under the auspice of the Viennese architect Otto Wagner and later worked in his architectural studio. In his earliest independent projects, we can see the influence of his environment and the use of typographic elements of Art Nouveau style, although his letters in their boldness and freedom somehow resist the proper Art Nouveau letters, despite their organic character and expressiveness. On the basis of Pechnik's work from the period of his life in Prague and later in Ljubljana, parallels with classicism can also be found in his letters. We can presume that Pechnik was a certain sense a self-taught typographer and that his values were rooted in architecture as an art as his main guiding principle. A development of Pletznik typeface. So the original sketches of the letter forms that Pletznik designed for his own works are safeguarded by the Pletznik house and range from the names of his plans to ideas from four book covers. The examinated archive was divided into style segments and the style that stood out the most was chosen as the source material for further development. Development of the typeface began with collection of his originals from the archive 
and we remain committed to analog sketching as part of design process because it allows us to see the detail and variety of design directions and makes it easier to reach decisions on further development. Digitalization usually begins with the creation of lowercase, but in this case, the uppercase were drawn first. It is also worth emphasizing the design of the letters was not only digitalization of Plechnik's originals, but rather involved an understanding of Plechnik's approach to design of the individual parameters and details of the letters. So hi from my side also. Uh, I will now talk about some typographic features that are included in the font. So the most, the most important parameter in the uppercase desi design of the Pletznik typeface reflects the use of classic elements and forms in the architect's works. So if we examine the widths of these letter forms in more detail, we see that most of them have two widths, a square and a half of a square. This proportion is called the classical proportion, and in our case, it is a distinctive feature of the Pletznik typeface. Other typographic features of the new typeface include uh, geometric shapes, sans serif stroke endings, a humanist style of terminals, and low contrast in the thickening of the stroke. Uh, the unique characteristic of the Pletznik typeface are hidden in the details. From Plechnik's sketches, we can observe that he often aligned the horizontals of the letter E along the right vertical, and the newly designed Plechnik typeface contains an even bolder form, where the horizontal is extended to the right. Uh, the upper round shape of letter S gives a sense of imbalance, which is linked to a recognizable Art Nouveau element and also showing the artistic style of the period in which Plechnik was creating. Okay, let's see other letters. Uh, the diagonals of the letter K also meet somewhat unusually in the center of the main vertical stroke, but they are aligned vertically on the right hand side. So we see this here. Let's move forward. Um, the distinctive feature of the letter M uh, in the upper left part is repeated several times in Plechnik's sketches, and in the typeface, such a detail can also be found in the letters A and W. Uh, recognizable features are also found in round shapes, so perfect circles trying to capture on letter P, D, and number two. And also these parameters and features designed for uppercase are applied to lowercase and digits so that the other characters in the set also take up the full width of uh, or half of a square. So the letter A and S follow the characteristic of the uppercase S uh, with the shorter in stroke, while E is remarkable for its unusually short out stroke. So, E with the feature here and S with a shorter in foot. Okay. Uh, the long horizontal strokes of letters F and T uh, follow the length of the central horizontal bar of letter E. So also prolong this. Okay. Uh, and we wanted the typeface to be used in bigger sizes and also it to be working well in longer text. Therefore, we designed small caps and also italic style of the Plitznik font. Uh, the two versions of the typeface uh, are, are, are a reflection of Plitznik's duality and boldness, uh, a combination of the class the regular style and the modern display style, as you can see here. So this is the regular and this is the display style. Um, is derived from the shape of Plechnik's columns, which written with height. The so-called vertical growth of thickening of the basic stroke towards the top. So these are the columns that he um, designed for buildings. And this reflects in the typeface here on this stroke. Uh, so this typeface is also variable on two axes, on weight and on slant. 
as you can see on the example of the letter A. And um, uppercase ligatures are not super common nowadays, but they took a big part of Plechnik's work. Therefore, we added some in the character set of Plechnik typeface. And these are very interesting because some characters are not um, that much seen, as I said. So T O V E or M E. Um, so from the initial architectural plan to the final details on the building, uh, Plechnik planned his project in a holistic and careful manner, paying attention to the inscriptions which follow a unified concept and create a thoughtfully designed finished unit. So now we are just showing some examples of use and here you can see um, the weight progressing and also some italics. Okay, um, so his inscriptions on monuments, book type settings, book covers, architectural plan elements, ex libris, additions in the form of ornaments and initials. These are all, also among Plechnik's prolific works, which had a strong influence on Slovenian type, typography. Uh, the newly created typeface represents a typographic legacy and contributes to the development development of Slovene typography as a distinctive visual representation of the Slovenian language. So this is our alphabet. Um, and if you are interested, interested in our project, you can read more about our research process and design in this booklet, Pletnik, that is available in English language and can be also ordered on our website. And alongside, of course, with the Plechnik libraries that is also available on our website. Um, that's it. Would you like to add something? Yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Alja and Krista. Uh, so that was a beautiful typeface, which has a very distinct characteristics. I really enjoyed uh, uh, looking at it. And thanks for sharing. Uh, it's beautiful and wonderful to see the variations also especially the display typeface. Of course, the other one is also very nice and also following a classical uh, proportion. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, so we have now completed all the presentations and we will now move on to the question and, say, uh, question and answer session. But it uh, looks like there's not much of a question on the chat box. I'm just wondering whether people are going to type it right now or uh, so we will wait uh, for some more time. If anybody wants to ask any questions to any, any of the presenters, kindly do so. You can put it in the chat box. I will ask them. Yeah. And before that, uh, thanks to all the presenters uh, uh, for keeping up to the time. I really appreciate it. It's very hard to find people just uh, restricting themselves to 15 minutes uh, in spite of doing so much of hard work. Uh, maybe some of them would have spent a year of work, I suppose. Yeah. So such a hard work being presented very comprehensively in a, such a short uh, duration is commendable. So thanks to all the presenters. Uh, so now I would look forward to the participants' questions. Otherwise, I have few questions for uh, in fact, all of them. So maybe I, if there's no questions on the chat box, I can just go ahead. Um, uh, there are comments, but uh, not questions. So yeah, everybody are appreciating all of your presentations. They are, uh, they really, uh, yeah, most of them are saying it's beautiful presentations. We have learned a lot. It's a great presentations. So we could see a lot of very good comments coming up. Uh, it only shows the, uh, the effort that you all put in. So we have now uh, Dr. Ajanta Sen who wants to ask a question. Yes, ma'am, please go ahead. I have a question for the for Dale from New Zealand. Uh, and uh, I also want to say that the Ljubljana presentation was uh, uh, fascinating. The fact that you took this famous architect and, uh, you know, delved into his uh, architectural form and then came out uh, uh, came out, you know, you took a three dimensional form and came out with something two dimensional is fantastic. Also, the fact that you were able to uh, use a signature name from your culture. And uh, typically, uh, these names are not known to a lot of people. And this way, Plechnik will get to be known, you know, his uh, seminal work. So, thank you for presenting that. Um, my question goes to uh, Dale. Uh, you talked Talk about uh, typography of place, which is a really nice topic. And you take the example of uh, sulfur point, 
and uh, you analyzed it really well because you uh, ultimately because of the grid nature of the functions over there you go for Bauhaus you know the functionality of Bauhaus right that's right right so my question here is that uh, if I had to take a sense of place uh, from somewhere else and uh, specifically I would refer to a sense of place uh, between the, you know, uh, let's say uh, occupied West Bank of Israel, which is actually Palestinian land, but occupied by another culture, you know, which is very different culture, right? Yep. Right. So now the Palestinians have a very deep sense of place in West Bank, or for that matter, Gaza, even more so in Gaza. And then, uh, and Israelis have their own uh, uh, unusual sense of place because they have no place, right? So they've come to a place and they've made it their place. That's very and, true. And they claim that it's their sense of place, although even by migratory uh, description, they, they don't have a standing there. So how would you uh, reconcile uh, with this kind of hybridity uh, and uh, you know the, the each of each of the claimants has a sense of place so how would you then research and give them a sense of place through your typography what would the outcome of the typography be for uh, gaza west gaza west bank would it be palestinian would it be and on top of that they have different language with different scripts arabic and um, uh, hebrew right so i would like to understand from you uh, how you would apply your sense of place to this kind of a situation <laughs> yeah sure that's that's a that's a that's a tough one um it'd be very difficult because whatever, whatever kind of way you so political so politicized that whichever kind of approach you took would be fraught um me personally i would look at the palestinian perspective and board out most of the characters um from their perspective in terms of um, their sense of place there. And because the Israelis have very much occupied and kind of have kind of sat in on top of the Palestinian space there, I perhaps treat the um, Israelis perhaps as their kind of perspective could perhaps be brought in topographically, maybe as sort of the diacritics or maybe the special characters, some other way of kind of bringing them in into so the main body of the typeface would be the Palestinians' perspective and then sort of special characters, maybe some dark critics could be kind of the Israeli kind of perspective because they're kind of, in some ways, the colonialist kind of force that uh, sits on top of the main Palestinian kind of yeah, uh, section there. But that's a tough one because places are very much the, you really have to experience those places yourself to really get a sense of, or to develop a kind of like a form of articulation from them. It's really hard to kind of put myself into the shoes of somewhere else that I've not actually experienced it myself, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. difficult situation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But if you can solve that, then there might be a way to unify the two cultures. Who knows? That would be very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Dave, for answering. Uh, yeah, there's one question in the chat box uh, by Gargi Mukherjee. This goes to all of you. So she has written that, do you think typefaces can be designed to influence people to read more, uh, given the habit of reading is almost gone for most of them? So maybe we can start with uh, Professor Pistilla. Pistilli. No, I, I wrote on the chat that I think the typography is not only a tool for read much more, but to think much more, because uh, typography is a, an extraordinary tool for sharing not only words, but also symbolic meanings. So I think the designers have a very important uh, uh, job for the future because we share, we share a lot of uh, meanings and a lot of uh, symbolic uh, icons. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I will move the same the question to uh, Dale as well, uh, Dale and Brian, and also Alja, if you can also uh, add to it, it will be nice.
If you are there. Hey. Oh, uh, probably. Uh, yes, yeah. Alja. Yeah. 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 I wanted to add just a slight uh, small thought that if you want people to read more, yeah, then their faces shouldn't be that noticeable or just be super smooth and not actually I I shouldn't stop in a way in order to read fluently or uh, really fastly. But then on the other hand, if we produce a uh, display or uh, interesting um, shapes, then we of course can bring uh, attention to the person and then by that giving them more opportunity to read more or to be a bit more affected by the typefaces that are surrounding us. So yes, in a way, and then we don't want to. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is there any other speaker who would want to add to this to answer a question? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's another two minutes left for the session to uh, conclude. So uh, since there is not much of a question, or Dale, you want to answer anything, or is it fine? So want to. Oh, I just saw. I know. I was, screen, I was so just okay. replying. I was replying to someone in chat. Um, but okay. in terms of. Yeah. Can typefaces, yeah. you know, encourage people to read more than sure. I agree with um, Asia, Alja, in that for most instances yeah. you want like a body copy to kind of stand in the background, which from a top from a topographer's kind of perspective is interesting. And whenever I talk to my students about that, they spend a lot of time designing these typefaces, and then I'm designed to to design them to be invisible, and they find that really hard to to kind of comprehend that I'm spending so much time designing something to just kind of be background and not really be seen. But that's such a part of graphic design. And but I, but I agree that um, yeah, and for body copy for reading most of the time you kind of look through the typefaces, you don't really notice them, um, but they do they do have an impact on that written word and they do kind of help shape that kind of meaning. So it's, it's subtle, but it does actually occur. And but I agree that display typefaces is where kind of we can really be expressive in that instance to make them reading kind of interesting to see challenging interesting forms and I, I kind of found that was a big part of brian's presentation with the way that he had done the students who created typefaces like that uh so yeah thank you thank you everyone i have one last question to again uh, uh professor Pistilli. uh so you have do you have an alternative title for the uh, uh, identity that uh, you've chosen right now it's like truth for peace right so is there any alternatives you have thought about? And also another uh, to add to the same question. So the last letter E is actually turned, uh, it's a uh, mirror. So is there any intentional reason that why it is uh, turned? So, uh, I, I, yeah, I hope I could. Uh, my, con my connection is uh, not, uh, not very well. Can you repeat this? Uh, OK, so I, I wanted to ask. Uh, so was there any alternative title for the identity instead of fruit for peace? So was there any other options that you had in mind which you have worked out and finally came down to this particular uh, title for your work? I think the, I, the question is about the title, the title of the project. Yes. So fruit for yes. peace, uh, what yes, yes. means uh, into the title of the project? And I think yeah, that in this case, the answer uh, that uh, the Prof. Piscirelli could give uh, in a perfect way, obviously, is um, because of the nature of the project and the, the social link that the project make up with the business of the local place, uh, of the cultural landscapes that we have fronted in this project, and as well uh, to the uh, relationship that uh, we take place in the, this project, uh, I think. Yes, because okay. fruit, for peace, fruit for Peace is, is a concept uh, and uh, is a concept uh, that uh, the utopia is uh, to promote uh, a uh, social and ethics approach in agro-industrial uh, economy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So yeah, with this, we uh, conclude the first session of our paper presentation. Uh, I now uh, request a, a session volunteer to please take over. And thanks to all the speakers and all the participants for being there and patiently listening.
it was a great session uh, i really enjoyed everybody's work and i learned a lot so thank you so much to all the speakers and also to the speak uh, participants for being there thank you over to you aneha thank you thank you to you thank, thank you, you so much you. thank you thank you thank you everyone on behalf of Taipei Day, uh, we sincerely thank you, Professor Adair Kumar, for chairing the session. And again, thank you all the speakers for interesting presentations. And thank you so much, participants, for being a part of this. Uh, let's now move on to the next session.